And now, stay tuned for the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because even when you know who is guilty, you always receive a startling surprise at the final curtain. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous Go Farther Gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am the Whistler, and I know many things for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, Triple Cross. Ted Lucas stopped walking as the lights over the entrance of a small apartment building highlighted on the words El Congo. The expression on his tight-drawn face seemed to relax a little. He drew in his breath, then walked rapidly to the doorway, and inside paused at the directory. There he ran his finger down the posted list of names until... Claire Henderson, apartment 214. Well, baby, I finally found you. Yes, Ted, you found her. After six months of running, hiding, you've decided to do the one thing Claire wouldn't expect you to do. Come out of hiding and find her and make her pay for what she's done to you. You take the stairs to the second floor, follow the hall to apartment 214, and ring the bell. Come in, Jeff. The door's unlocked. You're early, darling. I'm just making a drink. No, you are early, Jeff. I thought you... Wrong on two counts, baby. I'm not Jeff, and I'm not early. I'm about six months late. Ted Lucas. <laughs> What's the matter, Claire? Aren't you glad to see me? Well, I... Ted, Oh, I... you're just disappointed because I'm not Jeff. But, but how How'd did I you... find you? <laughs> I just looked. Yeah, thanks. I think I will sit down. Oh, it's a nice little farm you have here. You must grow a lot of berries, huh? Why, well, I uh, have a pretty good job. Oh, I'll bet you do. <laughs> Claire Henderson, working girl. Where do you work? Uh, oh, I should say who, huh? I'm secretary to Charles Seaton. Of oh, the diamond importer. That's right. Well, well. It was very clever of you. <laughs> no wonder you got a layout like this. The old man probably gives you a sack of old diamonds every now and then, huh? Or maybe my 30 grand brought all this fancy stuff. You think I'd be stupid enough to spend your money, Ted? It had occurred to me. But I didn't. Really, I, I've been worried about you ever since you left. Oh, I... you sounded worried when I got here. Come in, Jeff. The door's unlocked. I'm just mixing drinks. But I have been worried, Tim. <laughs> oh, so worried you couldn't even get in touch with me, huh? So concerned about me you wouldn't even send me my share of that payroll job we pulled. Come on, Claire. That was a $60,000 knockoff. Where's my hat? I was afraid to send it. The police were looking Very for you. Very smooth, baby. That's why I didn't take my cut that night, Remember? So if the law caught up with me, I wouldn't have the money on me. You, Miss Mastermind, had it. The whole 60 grand. You were supposed to send me half. Man, what a chump I was. Ted, you're all wrong. You had three months to send me that 30,000 while I was at that little spot near the border. You had my address. You didn't send it. But, Ted, I... You knew I'd figure I couldn't stay in one place very long. And you figured I'd be afraid to come back here. Well, I want my 30 grand. I want it fast. Of course you do, and I've kept it for you. You what? I said I've kept your half of the money for you. Yeah? When do I get it? <laughs> Tomorrow morning, as soon as the bank opens. Tomorrow morning, as soon as the bank opens. Now, there's just one thing about it. Oh, I thought that. What's the catch? <laughs> no catch. With my connections, working for Mr. Seaton, I, I had a chance to make a good investment in diamonds a couple of months back. I bought $30,000 worth for you. They're in my safety deposit box. Now, wasn't that thoughtful of me? Mm-hmm. More thoughtful than you realize. 
The diamond market's jumped a little since then. You'll make a little profit when you cash them in. You know, there's something wrong with this, Claire. I don't know what it is yet, but I... But uh... you still don't trust me. Uh... It's not hard to understand, Ted. You decided months ago I double-crossed you. You thought about nothing else since then. Now you've found out I haven't, and you just can't believe it, that's all. I don't get this sudden interest in my welfare. You have a very short memory, Ted. I'm no different than I was when you left. Can't you remember how I was then? I was so sure you'd run out on me. I still don't get it. You won't have to wait much longer to know, Ted. Just meet me at the bank tomorrow morning at 10. I won't have to meet you, Claire. I'll be with you. Hmm? What do you mean? I'm staying here tonight, on that couch there in the living room. (laughs) Yeah, oh, it isn't that I don't trust you. It's just that, well, it took me so long to find you. I just can't stand to let you out of my sight. Jen! Well, it's five straight games you won. (laughs) Looks like you can beat me at any game, huh? Uh, Ted, it's getting late. Oh, don't let me keep you up. Anytime you feel like turning in for the night, you go right ahead. Hmm? But you... I told you, I told you, I'm staying. After the places I've been sleeping, the couch looks like the governor's suite to me. (laughs) Say, Claire, I'm still wondering what happened to your boyfriend, Jeff. He, uh, sort of stood you up tonight, huh? (laughs) Looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah. He's nobody, Ted. Just a guy. You're all a boyfriend, I mean. Go on, hit the hay, Claire. This is a business call. Pure business. Okay, Ted. That's the way you want it. I'll see you in the morning. You sure will. Oh. Oh. You stare at the front door of the apartment in startled silence. Your first impulse is to answer the door, isn't it, Ted? But you quickly realize you can't be seen. Could be only Jeff, Claire's date for the evening. But it might be someone else, Ted. You realize you might have been followed. The police could have picked up your trail and want to talk about the payroll robbery. You move quickly through the apartment to the kitchen. There you find a service entrance into the main hall. Silently, you open the door, peer out at the figure standing with his back to you at Claire's front door. Just a man in a dark suit, Ted. Nothing distinguishing about him. But you take a good long look at him, then close the door noiselessly. And in a short time, you hear his footsteps fading down the hall. Ted, say, where are you? Uh, in the kitchen, Claire. You got any milk? Mm, in the refrigerator. Did I hear a knock on the door? Uh, no, no, I, uh, I hit a table on the way to the kitchen. Oh. Well, good night, Ted. Good night. You wait in the kitchen until you hear Claire go into the bedroom and close the door. You're still not sure of her, are you, Ted? The man at the door was probably Jeff, Claire's friend, but you don't know. You return to the living room, systematically turn off all the lights, and then move for the front window, which overlooks the street. It's almost deserted, isn't it, Ted? And then your eye catches the figure of a man standing across the street, leaning against the lamppost and looking up toward Claire's apartment. Same guy. Same guy who was here. This is Cupid Miller, or, I mean, Marvin Miller, with a message especially for lovers. After all, folks who have never been in love wouldn't know how it feels to fall in love. And the signal product I want to talk with you about tonight is going to make you fall in love all over again with your car. I'm referring to Signal Ethel, the premium grade of Signal's famous go-farther gasoline. You'll experience your first love when you touch the starter. 
and your motor springs to life instantly with Signal Ethel. You'll know it's really love when you discover the peppy pickup of Signal Ethel. And you'll agree, Signal Ethel is your one love when you see how its smooth, silent power rockets your car uphill without shifting or pinging. You want to know the reason for all this amour? Like any true sweetheart, this sweetheart of a gasoline brings out the best in any car of any age. So why not show your car that you really care? Treat it to a tank full of the best tomorrow. You and your car will love Signal Ethel. You're puzzled, aren't you, Ted? Strangely puzzled. Yes, and afraid, too. You've learned to be wary in the six months you've been hiding. After the payroll robbery, which you and Claire Henderson planned and carried out. But it's more than that now, isn't it, Ted? Everything about your return seems strange, ominous. First, it was Claire, calmly announcing that she hadn't spent your $30,000 cut at all. That she'd invested it in diamonds for you. And that you'd even make a profit. Then that knock on the door, the man in the dark suit who later took up a post across the street and watched Claire's apartment. You don't know who he is, do you, Ted, or what he wants? All through the long night, you sit there in the darkness of Claire's living room, turning the whole situation over in your mind. Shortly before morning, you doze off. It's nearly ten o'clock when you awake with a start. Ted, wake up. Oh, Oh, it's you, Claire. I must have fallen asleep. (laughs) Wisely sitting up in a chair, I thought the couch impressed you. I changed my mind. Hey, wait a minute. What on earth's the matter with you, Ted? Who do you expect to see out of the window? I don't know. Never mind. No one's out there now anyway. It's funny. Hmm? What? Nothing. You ready? Yeah. Well, then, come on. Let's do that bit at the bank where you deliver my 30,000 in diamonds. Still don't trust me, do you? No. Not yet. All the way downtown in the taxi, you divide your time between studying Claire and trying to determine whether or not you're being followed. Finally satisfied that no one is trailing you, you try to reconcile Claire's smiling confidence with the fact that she's about to deliver to you $30,000 in diamonds. It doesn't make sense, does it, Ted? Even as the two of you enter the bank and walk to the safe deposit box section, you're still goaded with suspicion and distrust. Stop looking so intense, Ted. If I didn't know better, I'd think you had plans to blow the bank up. The bars over the vault make me nervous and quit ad living. Let's get this thing over with. Uh, may I help you? Oh, hello, Miss Henderson. Hello, I'd like to get into my safety deposit box, please. Uh, we'll just uh, sign a card, Miss Henderson. Oh, bad. There we are. Uh, this way, please. You don't mind waiting for me out here, do you, Dan? Why should I? You've got to come out this way. You look up with a sense of relief as Claire walks towards you, smilingly takes your arm, and the two of you walk from the bank and hail a taxi. After the cab's underway, Claire silently hands you a packet. You open it and find an impressive collection of diamonds inside. Trust me now, Ted. Mr. Seaton must be very proud of you. What kind of a crack is that? Well, if my trained eye is still in training, you have excellent taste in diamonds. I have excellent taste. Hey, period. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure, but this calls for a drink, maybe, huh? Just maybe. Before noon? Ah, uh, time is relative. <laughs> you got a particular hangout these days, or will the soothsayer do the trick? I haven't been there. Six months. Yeah, by an odd coincidence, neither have I. Hey, driver, drop us at the soothsayers, will you? <laughs> I keep waiting for it, but I never hear it. Waiting for and never hear what? Your apology. Apology? (laughs) Just for thinking you double-crossed me? Mm. Hey, don't get carried away, doll. Just because I buy you a drink and flash you one of my better smiles, it doesn't mean I... Ted, what's the matter? It's that guy. Hmm? 
The same guy I saw last night. What guy did Now, listen, listen. Don't act like anything's wrong. Keep sipping your drink. When I give you a cue, take a look at the guy in the dark suit at the end of the bar. Tell me if you recognize him. Okay. Could be your boy Jeff, you know. Whoever he is, I'm pretty sure he's following me. There, see? He's looked away for a minute quick, you know him? No. No, I don't, Ed. You better be sure, baby. Because if that is your boyfriend, and this is some kind of a trick, I'll... It's no trick, Ted, honestly. We'll see. Anyway, you better be rambling along. But you'll see me later, baby. That's a promise. As Claire gets up, walks from the bar, you keep your eyes fastened on the man you feel certain is trailing you. You're certain this is the same man who knocked at Claire's door last night. And you're determined now to sell the diamonds before they cause you any more trouble. He's still standing with his back to you as you get up quickly, hurry unnoticed through the door behind you to the back hall, which leads to the rear entrance on an alleyway. Once there, you break into a dead run to the next corner and hurriedly hail a passing taxi. After a few blocks, you're certain you've lost the man you're sure was trailing you. You're driven to the office of an old friend. Be with you in just a moment. Hurry it up, Marco. Okay, okay. Well, well, Ted Lucas. Long time? No, see. Look, are we alone? Like lovers. Mm. Where you been, Ted? I haven't seen you since... Since the last time, Marco. We really must get together and have a nice long chat real soon. Right now, I want you to wrap your good eye around that jeweler's glass and tell me a nice story about these. Ah. You been heisting precious stones? They're a gift. Come on, Marco, hurry it up. Okay, okay. Let's see now. Hmm. Ah. You know what, Ted? These are diamonds. Real fine diamonds. They are, huh? Well, that much is good. Now, how about You the... got another friend like me, Ted? What do you mean? Where's the rest of the load? How come you're just trying to dump this much on me? Well, this is all I've got. Come on, how much, Marco? Now, look, don't try to chump me, Ted. Because if I unload these for you, I'll be doing you a big favor. Big. What do you mean? What's wrong with them? You said they were fine stones. They are. Fine and uh, hot, too. They're hot? Plenty hot. This is only part of that Seton job a couple of nights ago. Seton? Seton, the diamond importers? Yeah, yeah, Seton's. Oh. Very smooth job, Teddy boy. You got the cops baffled, huh? Listen, Marco, how much are they worth, these here? Well, as they stand right now, about 35 grand. Mm-hmm. But to fence them, uh, I'll have to cut them, and uh, then they don't bring so much. Maybe uh, only 20 or so. I see. You better level with me, Ted. Haul out the rest of that seat and load, and then maybe we can do business. But I won't handle any of it unless I handle it all. It's too dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I guess you're right, Marco. Okay, I'll, I'll take these along and get the rest of the diamonds for you. Didn't expect to find you in, Claire. Or are you in just in the middle of packing? Packing? I don't know what you're talking about. I, I just got home. That's swell. So did I. Sit down. Ted, what's Sit the... Sit down! Wait. You know, I really admire you. You've really got talent. I don't know what you're talking it took about. Took me a while, baby, but I finally caught on for good this time. Telling me you worked at Seton's. <laughs> Man, how you worked there. But I did, Ted. I did. I quit a couple of weeks ago. And maybe got 60, 75,000 bucks in diamonds for severance pay? Sure you did. That's where your boy Jeff came in, isn't it? He probably did the dirty work for you, just like I did on the payroll job. Ted, will you listen to Ever me Ever since Shai showed up, he's been dogging my trail. He was going to put me away for you, wasn't he, Bright Eyes? Oh, no, Ted, nothing like that. Will you let me tell okay, you? Okay, you tell me and be quick. All right, all right. We did do the seating job, Jeff and I, but the rest of it isn't true. I had no idea you were anywhere around. Besides, you got your old cut. Those diamonds I gave you are worth at least 35000 Not when they're cut and they got to be cut or Markle won't fence them. 
Now, where are the rest? I don't have them, Ted. Jeff has them. Not if I know you. He hasn't. You don't work that way. No, Ted, I don't. This is the way I work. Oh. You play with guns, too. Now, when I have to, now get out or I'll give you your real cut. Sure, baby. I'll get it. Now, we'll play my way. Where do I find Jeff? Listen, Ted, Better talk fast, Claire. Okay, okay. He's at the Denton Arms, apartment 107. 107, Denton Arms, huh? I hope you're telling the truth, baby. You better be. If not, I'll be back and pay you off. Really pay you off. You take Claire's gun, leave the apartment, and then hurriedly double back to the service entrance to the kitchen and silently try the door. It opens. You slip noiselessly into the kitchen, just in time to hear Claire on the phone giving out all the information you need. Yes, that's right. Now, please, don't ask any more questions. There isn't time. I tell you, we just left. Yes, he's on his way there right now. Hurry. I thought you weren't going anywhere, baby. Ted. Warning your boyfriend I was coming to see him, huh? Oh, no, Ted. Figuring I... on making a quick getaway, weren't you? Pack everything and run for oh, it. Oh, no, Ted. Last I... chance, baby. I want the rest of those diamonds. I told you I don't have them. Okay, baby. Have it your own way. No. Ted, please, No. Now I'll see your boyfriend at the Denton Arms. After shooting Claire, you slip her gun into your pocket and hurry out the back way of the apartment. The Denton Arms is less than three blocks away, and you decide it's safer to walk the distance, swallowed up in the late afternoon traffic. Your confidence grows with each step. You'll get the diamonds now, Ted, all of them. Just one more obstacle in your way, Jeff. And you're certain that won't take long. Then you'll make a quick deal with Markle and leave town. You enter the side door of the Denton Arms, blink at the late afternoon darkness of the halls, make your way to apartment 107. You listen at the door, no sound. And then hearing a sound down the hall, you step quickly into a recess in the wall by the door. A man walks toward apartment 107, slows his pace just before he reaches it. It's the same man, isn't it, Ted? The man in the dark suit who's been following. Okay, you're covered. Hey, what is this? We'll talk inside. It's cozier. And I'll give you a clue. We'll talk about diamonds. Okay. If you say so. Come on, open up. I... <laughs> yes, I forgot my key. You're not very bright, are you? Try the knob. Maybe you left it unlocked. <laughs> inside. Now, smart boy, we're going to talk business. You and me. It looks like you've got me. You bet I have. I've got you just where I want you. Stop it. Stop engine wear that can cut down your car's pep and power, cut down your gasoline mileage. Stop it. Stop engine wear that can make your car become an oil eater, make it need an expensive overhaul. How can you stop engine wear? By simply by changing oil, changing to Signal's amazing new premium motor oil that reduces engine wear due to lubrication 50%. Through newly perfected scientific developments, wonderful extra protection has been engineered into this superior quality new motor oil New Signal Premium stops acid corrosion and rust, controls and reduces harmful engine deposits, keeps oil rings clean and free, keeps hydraulic valve lifters from sticking. Yet this heavy-duty type oil is yours to enjoy at regular price at Signal stations. No wonder more and more drivers with an eye to keeping performance up and costs down are changing to Signal's amazing new oil, that reduces engine wear due to lubrication 50%. Changing at signal stations. Have you changed yet to signal? Well, Ted, you're beginning to track down and overcome all the obstacles, aren't you? With Claire out of the way, shot with her own gun. You have now only to deal with Jeff, her accomplice, 
get the rest of the diamonds from him, and get out of town before anyone knows you've returned. You're certain you'll be able to contact Markle later and dispose of it. Now you've ushered the man who's been trailing you into apartment 107 of the Denton Arms at the point of Claire's gun. It's nearly dusk now, and you fumble with your free hand to turn on a lamp. Okay, I haven't got much time. Let's have the diamonds. What diamonds? The Satan diamonds. To match these, I've got with me. Okay. Just a minute. Hey, wait a minute. Look at this. What is this? You don't know? Looks very much like a corpse to me. Let's see now. The papers on him say Jeff. Jeff Healy. And he's really dead. Shot. Jeff. He's Jeff. As if you didn't know. I didn't. I thought you were. So this is where you came this afternoon when you got away from me, hmm? No, I... Who are you? Linton's the name. Detective Linton, robbery division. Now, you better hand over that gun, Lucas. Thanks. That's better. But I don't get it. You've been following me around it. Ever since I happened to see you go into the El Congo apartment the other night. Thought I'd see what you were up to before I talked to you about that payroll job. Hey, we think you pulled it about six months ago. Looks like you branched out since then, huh? Into diamonds and murder. What are you talking about? The Seton Diamond job. You're wrong. I didn't do that Seaton job. It was a dame. Claire Henderson and this guy, Jeff Healy. She double-crossed me before. Now she's double-crossed him. Permanently. Could be. But you were pretty sure Jeff had some more diamonds, Lucas. Well, there's none on him now. Maybe I better take a look around the apartment. Won't do you any good. Uh, Claire Henderson, she had them even when I... How did you happen to come here? You said I'd shaken you off. A woman called headquarters. A woman? Yeah. She said if we come to the Denton Arms, apartment 107, we find the seat and fate and a murderer. Looks like she was right. She was phoning the cops, the little... I didn't do it, I tell you. Maybe not. But if you got the diamonds on you, like you said, and if this gun is the one that killed Jeff here, you've got an awful lot of explaining to do. I tell you, it was Claire Henderson. She was planning on skipping town and framing me. Maybe she was at that. Look. I'll give you a break, Lucas. Suppose you take me over to see her, and we'll find out what she has to say, hmm? Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Meantime, Signal Oil Company and the friendly independent dealers who help you go farther with Signal Gasoline hope you remember. Regardless of what gasoline you use, you'll enjoy more miles of happy driving if you drive at sensible speeds, obey traffic regulations, and avoid taking chances. You may even save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman, Gerald Moore, Betty Lou Gerson, Larry Blake, and Byron Kane. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Nancy Cleveland, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember to tune in at this same time next Sunday for another strange story by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.